Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today, in this tutorial, I am going to explain a, a recent paper, very new paper, on uh, speech translation, uh, known as end-to-end uh, -end speech translation with uh, knowledge distillation. And this paper is uh, from China, and um, the is the collaboration between few universities and uh, Baidu company. And these are the authors here, you can see. And uh, in this tutorial, I am going to explain first the overview of the paper and then we will see the proposed model uh, which is a speech translation model and uh, finally we will see the experiments and finally we will see some results. So coming to the overview, as I said, uh, this paper is uh, speech translation. Uh, speech translation is nothing but uh, translating, uh, translating a spoken audio in one language to another language. For example, let's say you speak in uh, uh, Spanish and uh, you say you say some sp sentence in spanish and i want english text of that translated uh, english text of that particular spanish utterance so you could say i will do speech recognition uh, speech recognition or asr and you can combine with the mt machine translation this is the whole uh, previously what people used to do this uh, pipeline system people used to do before but these days you have a capability of uh, directly translating one audio in one language to text in other language we'll, we'll see what are the algorithms used in this paper and what are the advantages of using st i mean uh, you get lower latency because you are bypassing mt because uh, it's a sort of like single asr system which takes audio and predicts some text but the text is not in that particular language but it's in um, some other language model size is smaller obviously because you are completely removing mt model this model is gone and uh, less error proportion obviously because MT will have its own errors and ASR will have its own error. So if you can build a single model which can directly do this thing then you are reducing the amount of error. right? And uh, the what uh, in this paper what they are saying is using knowledge distillation uh, which is sort of like a teacher student learning where you train the teacher which is uh, machine translation and uh, the teacher which is the machine translation algorithm is going to guide the student model which is a speed translation model. And uh, that is the main idea of this paper, uh, like I will just tell you here, let us say you have a machine translation system which takes Spanish text and uh, predicts English text. So once you do this, then you can use the output probability of this uh, machine translation to guide the, uh, uh, to, uh, to guide the another algorithm which takes speech as input and predicts uh, text as output. The text could be in other language, uh, the speech could be in other language. So we will see how this happens completely in the coming slides. And in this data, in this paper, they use uh, uh, English, French augmented Libre speech data set uh, re recently got released back in 2016. And also, they have crawled data set from online and they have showed using uh, uh, which is uh, English audio and Chinese text, and they have showed some improvement. You'll see that. Then, uh, uh, so that is the data sets they have used, and they show, show that using this method, this is the knowledge distillation method, you get 3.5 improvement in blue score. So uh, propose in the proposed model section, we'll explain first the algorithm, which is the model. Uh, then we'll see uh, what uh, b they use something called transformer in this paper. Transformer, many, many people will be knowing about it. If you, are, if you don't know transformer, please go back go back to my channel and uh, listen to a lecture on uh, uh, all attention is all you need paper. It completely explain how the transformer works. If you don't know about transformer, you can go and uh, read it. And uh, we'll uh, again explore what is this knowledge distillation technique they are applying in this uh, paper. So we'll ex explain it section by section. So in the first section, we'll explain the uh, model, the model which was published in this paper. So th basically, this paper is about uh, using transformers. So as I said, transformer, if you don't know about the transformer, please go and read it. It's a transformer is sort of like a, a transformer is sort of like a uh, it's a sort of, it's not exactly convolution, not exactly LSTM, but it works. It does the same job as uh, convolution and uh, LSTM. So what it does is, uh, for example, you can see here, there is a transformer block. Basically, the transformer block will have two parts. One is called uh, self-attention. And another is called, another is a feed-forward network, FFN, you can say. And uh, self-attention is nothing but uh, sort of attending to its own input. Uh, we'll explain what is self-attention. Uh, I will not explain exactly what is self-attention. Is you can think of it as sort of attention, where uh, you don't, you are not getting any uh, any uh, in uh, you are not you don't have a key value pair from the let's say encoder side to predict uh, while doing prediction on decoder side. This is sort of like if you have a sequence of vectors in your input side, uh, you sort of attend you create attention uh, matrix which 
tries to attend in the input encoder itself. For example, if this is the encoder, you try to see attend to all others. Uh, given this uh, vector, you go and attend to all other vectors. Or given this vector, you go and attend to these vectors like that. This is called self-attention. So it's sort of like encoder has its own attention. This is that's why it's called self-attention. And uh, after this self-attention, uh, you can directly go ahead and uh, apply feed-forward neural network at every time step. And uh, that's one layer like that. You can have many blocks stacked on top of each other, like stealth, like this uh, block. You can see here this n could be like five, six, whatever number of uh, encoder layers you're using. So this within within encoder, as you can see, it's a multi-head self-attention. It's supposed to be self-attention. So it's a multi-head. I will tell you why it's called multi-head because it has multiple uh, attention uh, heads actually. So that's why it's called multi-head attention. Then uh, you have point-wise uh, feed-forward network. Then there is something called positional encoding, which is important because when you are doing the self-attention, there is no, uh, you are losing the uh, sequence information. Like for example, uh, once you create that self-attention, you don't know okay uh, when, after when this input will come, after what time this input will come. So to capture that, because those are very important information, because time, I mean, if you are working with time series, that time information is very important. So to capture that time information, they are using this positional encoding. Uh, that's a small block. But after that, whatever you're doing is a self-attention. So here, if you observe, there is no linear, uh, there is no LSTM, there is no convolutional neural network. This is why it's a great idea and uh, sort of a breakthrough. People have been using it l uh, everywhere, like. If you see uh, multi uh, machine translation or any sequence to sequence mapping algorithms, people use this uh, transformer. So that is the idea of the encoder part of uh, encoder part of uh, transformer. Um, then coming to the decoder, the decoder has again self attention. So the decoder, if you look at it, uh, just I'll just explain you this decoder. So I'll explain what are these two paths uh, once again, but uh, just just to get a, just to give you an idea of what is transformer. I'm explaining you what is, uh, if you look at the decoder, decoder has uh, something called self-attention again, but along with self-attention, multi-head self-attention, it also has attentions coming from encoder side. So on top, from the last layer of the encoder, uh, you also get some input and you have to attend to those inputs also. So you have two attention, so attentions for uh, encoder side, attentions for encoder input, right? So that is the difference. So you have two attentions here in an decoder, as I said, self-attention, which is attending to its own uh, outputs, out because the decoder predicts output. Then you have the attentions for the input encoder. And again, you can stack these things on top of each other, multiple, multiple of them. And finally, you can apply softmax and uh, predict the uh, whatever labels you want, right? Or sequence of labels. So that is the idea of uh, transformer coming here. So here, if you see, there is one path called ST, encoder ST decoder. So ST encoders basically it takes speech translation. You can say, okay, this is my speech in Spanish, right? It's a sort of waveform or you convert into spectrogram and you get an English text. Let's say I am going to school, right? So this is ST path or speech translation path. Speech translation, right? And this path is basically machine translation path. You have text which is, let's say, uh, uh, maybe Spanish text and you may be predicting English text, right? So now if you see, we have some softmax output from uh, the encoder, uh, in from the speech translation or uh, speech recognition, you can also say because if you change this uh, English text to Spanish text, this becomes speech recognition, this stream. And uh, this is again empty. So if you see, what we are trying to do is we are taking the softmax outputs from uh, the speech translation and from empty and we are computing the distil distillation loss, which could be uh, 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 KD, it's called KD loss. We'll see what is that KD loss. And then once you compute the KD loss, you can just do a back propagation, right? Knowledge distillation, right? So you can think of this as a teacher, which is actually teaching the student, which is this, right? So I hope you got it. This is the whole idea. So you have a speech translation student network, you have machine translation um, um, teacher network, then you are using distillation laws to train the student, not the uh, teacher. Teacher, you can train it separately, machine translation. And once you train it, you use distillation laws to, to train the uh, uh, student, which is the uh, speech translation model. And uh, just to give you a small uh, heads up on uh, transla transformer, you have, as I said, you have attention block which takes uh, key value, uh, this key value, and uh, this is uh, uh, 
this is uh, query right so query as you can see if you must be knowing about these things i assume you know about these things so the key matrix you have a value matrix and you have a query matrix and uh, you can use something called scaled dot dot product scaled dot product attention this is the attention algorithm scaled dot product attention where dk is the dimension of the uh, 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 the query i believe uh, uh, di dimension of the key sorry uh, is a dimension of the key and uh, before it was only date dot product based attention now they introduce the scale dot product because if the length of the key changes then uh, you will have to automatically scale this uh, dot product and then you are finally applying to value so this is how you compute one attention the like that you can have multiple attentions and concatenate the outputs of each attention head you may have 10 attentions so and each each with, within each attention there is one small change that within each attention you are transforming your uh, query matrix uh, key matrix and value matrix into some other uh, affin you are applying affine transformation then on top of it you are applying attention uh, for a ith head here like as you can see like that you have uh, i if i goes from 1 to 10 uh, you will have 10 vectors of this form and uh, or matrices of this form then you will combine all of them and get a single uh, single multi head attention output right that's the idea of transformer so coming to the main algorithm of this paper which is the uh, distillation loss or knowledge distillation so where you are uh, you are actually applying uh, some sort of uh, uh, what we say is uh, uh, the uh, the knowledge distillation is basically we have a teacher model which actually gives you some sort of uh, smooth uh, posterior probabilities to uh, guide the uh, student uh, model so uh, let's we let's first see the the st loss which is the uh, like path one as you can see in, as you saw in the previous slide you had a left side there was a network uh, which was actually taking audio and predicting the uh, text in the other language so that loss is basically the log likelihood basically this is a negative log likelihood of the data so, so there is this the speech spectrogram x is the uh, source transcription if i say source transcription if my audio is french your text is also french this is a source transcript why is the translated transcript which is english transcript Right? So you want to predict the translated transcript given the speech and the network is parameterized by uh, parameter theta and you just want to increase the log likelihood of the data. Right? So that is the whole idea. Then you can break down this, uh, uh, you, if you find out what is this term here, uh, it actually boils down like this. So where you have n number of uh, time steps, where n is number of words in your, uh, let's say, audio. Then you have uh, vocabulary, which is of uh, V, capital mod V dimension. Then you are just uh, finding the probability of every word given the previous words and the correspond and the speech sentence uh, conditioned on the parameterize parameters of the model, right? So this is one loss. Uh, this is called ST loss or speech translation loss. Then coming to another loss, which is basically the teacher's loss. So the teacher's loss is basically the uh, machine translation loss. So you can think of this this P, what we are seeing is the probability distribution of the the speech translation model and you can think of this q as the probability distribution of the uh, teacher model which is the machine translation algorithm which actually looks at which actually predicts y conditioned on previous uh, predictions and x which is the source transcript this is like it is taking source transcription which is can be french transcript and trying to predict the english version of it right now as when as and when it predicts uh, uh, you can compute the uh, you can the, the, the KD loss uh, KD loss you can think of it as cross attribute between these two distribution you could also apply uh, something called uh, 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 any any other uh, uh, distribution minimization algorithms uh, like for example Jensen Shannon's uh, distribution or earth mover distance or you can also apply uh, KL divergence so many uh, divergence uh, many divergence algorithms are there where you find the distribution uh, try to match the two distributions so here they are simply using cross entropy so the Q is the distribution of the empty model and uh, KD KD model is basically like this goes like this so you have uh, uh, I think there is one mistake here they have left this minus here so they have not put the minus here which is I think uh, they made a mistake I think they have to review the paper again i hope they uh, get it and uh, resub into the paper and uh, the, uh, that is that's the one small mistake i found and uh, again coming back to the uh, main core uh, main uh, loss we are th uh, talking which is the kd loss you are using again log likelihood given x and y you have to uh, find uh, the 
distance between the two distributions. So, so it's basically the cross entropy. So you have this distribution, you have the distribution from ST, and uh, you just want to, uh, that is the KD loss, which is uh, the uh, knowledge distillation loss. Now the final loss, the total loss is combination of uh, the speech translation loss and KD loss. And they are weighted by uh, a parameter called lambda, right? So that you can play with and see okay, how the accuracy is. This is the whole idea of the uh, paper. And uh, coming to the experiments, I hope uh, you guys got it. Coming to the experiments, uh, we'll see uh, they have used uh, augmented libre speech data set where you have uh, audio, audio from English, audio from text, audio of text and corresponding uh, the French text also, right? And uh, this is done by aligning the ebooks in French with English utterances in speech, and they uh, they have around 236 hours of data. You can also download it, and in that they use only 100 hours of data for training, two hours for development, four hours for testing, and uh, this is the statistics of the data. And also they use TED English Chinese dataset, which is called from TED web website, and they get around uh, 542 hours of data, which is good. And uh, this is the s uh, split for uh, test and uh, uh, dev, uh, dev data. And um, for experimentation, they are using a caustic feature uh, of 80 dimension log mill filter bank energies uh, with 10 millisecond shift and 25 millisecond window size. And they also apply a CMVN, which is um, capsule mean subtraction and variance normalization algorithm. And uh, they also do something called frame stacking and frame subsampling just to uh, uh, just to increase the batch size on uh, just or just to uh, uh, reduce the memory of uh, GPU because not memory of GPU like uh, it's increase the batch size so that uh, it fits on a memory of the GPU memory because uh, we usually face the problem that uh, if your audios are uh, if you keep all the all the full audio with all the uh, uh, CM, uh, all the MFCCs and stuff then your GPU may not be sufficient to fit the entire model and uh, the data so and uh, that is the th that's the idea of and uh, for augmented libre speech, they are using 8,000 subboards, which are uh, sort of uh, subboards are like recently fancy and recently people have been using it for speech recognition and other things. Uh, instead of using words or uh, characters, people use subboards. And uh, for chain, uh, for TED, they use 30 sub 30,000 subboards. And number of head in multi head attention is eight. Coming to the results, so these are uh, ASR empty results on test of augmented libre speech. So uh, this is one old algorithm. They're getting WR of this much. And using this algorithm, you get uh, WR, which is very less, uh, 16 point compared to all others. And blue, blue score, which is also uh, better compared to all other uh, methods. And uh, on TED, uh, they are getting, uh, using empty, they get blue score of 27, which is good. And using the pipeline, the pipeline is basically ASR plus empty algorithm and uh, they get around 22 blue point, which is very good. If they use end to end, which is directly feeding English uh, or French, English audio and directly predicting French text, which is uh, giving you 16.8, uh, which is not that great. And if you use KD, knowledge station, you get very good performance. And uh, you can also play with uh, the lambda coefficient, which is uh, scaling up uh, the KD loss or the ST loss. And uh, the using changing the lambda will actually uh, give you with keeping lambda equal to one gives you uh, 17.02. Uh, and uh, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Uh, thank you.